Thank you for coming. I know it was not suggested that your coming be voluntary, but, but thank you for coming. Um, we're starting a few minutes late because chapel just finished at uh, 10.30, and that's fine. But I see a good number of after chapel coffee mugs in the audience, and uh, so we, we will begin. Uh, thank you to three, three groups. First of all, to the faculty and staff. Uh, this is a historic year. The 179th year introduces a new curriculum. It introduces the semester system. And I want to personally, and if I may on behalf of the church, thank the faculty and staff years and innumerable hours went into the preparation of the curriculum. The faculty worked hard on it, but so did the staff. Uh, things wouldn't get done here without the work of the staff. And so I, I thank faculty and staff from my heart, and as I presume also on behalf of the church, which will benefit from these new um, curriculum. Uh, secondly, to you, the students, I say thank you. You have heard from me many times, maybe ad nauseum, that this is a great time to get into the ministry because it's the ministry of our Lord Jesus. There are so many challenging things out there, and we bump into them all the time. They discourage us often. But if we believe, as we profess, that Jesus rose from the dead and is the Lord of the church, we are compelled by our faith to say that this is a great time to be in service in the time where he has placed us. My generation is receding, and what is incumbent upon my generation, whether that be faculty, staff here, or throughout the church, is to mentor, to tell you our stories. You know, one of the things that uh, we may not recognize, we who are a little older, is you can take or leave what we say, because you'll be coming to our funerals, and then you're going to do whatever you want. So I, lo I look to my generation, and especially here at the seminary, to tell you our stories, our stories of how God has blessed us. And then we will recede with confidence that the Lord of the church is raising you up for this new 21st century opportunity. I might say two things then to faculty, uh, staff, and students. First, as an administrator, I want to thank you for the patience and the uh, cooperation that you have shown in the introduction of the new curriculum. What I'm hearing is, is that it is basically going very well, but there are understandable glitches. And so thank you for the patience and the cooperative spirit that you are showing in that. In the same, same vein, uh, thank you for the cooperation that you are showing with our temporary li library arrangements. As I understand, the use of the library is just like always, um, and thank you for that. Out in the world, people could complain about these things, but here you are showing the, the spirit of the seminary and the community of cohesion that we have. I say that as an administrator, as a uh, pastor, though not serving a congregation, obviously, but having a pastoral heart, I also want to thank you who regularly come to chapel. That is a witness to me that my sorry soul desperately needs. The, the flip side of that is that it grieves me when some people don't come. As I look back at 13 years, it, in November, it'll be 13 years since I was put in this humbling job. We've gone through a lot, a huge financial crisis, governance issues, and now a need to recruit more students, and we'll talk about that shortly. 
But there's no doubt about it that as I look back over 13 years, I feel a deep grief, deep, deep grief about people who regularly uh, skip chapel. And as, as my wife says, who's sitting in the back, she can hear when my mind slams shut. And so it is slammed shut on that. But to the, the, the positive side, thank you for coming because at least this is one guy who needs your witness and that's what you do when you come to chapel. Thirdly, uh, to you who are joining us via the live stream, I want to say thank you. In chapel, we regularly pray for individuals. We pray for your congregations. Many people are mentioned by name, many congregations by name. Over these years, you have partnered with Concordia Seminary in this mission of our Lord Jesus Christ, because that's what it is, a part of the mission of our Lord Jesus Christ to this hurting world. So I thank you also for joining us. Now today, the purpose of this is to uh, talk about events from the last Board of Regents meeting. We're also going to say something about financial aid, which is probably the most exciting or interesting thing to all of you. But uh, the people who prepared the con convocation this morning intentionally left that at the end. <laughs> okay, so you're going to have to listen to some boring or not so boring stuff, and then we'll give you, I think, very good news about financial aid. When the last uh, meeting of the Board of Regents came up, there was great prayer in and out of chapel that God would bless that meeting, and God answered those prayers. The meeting was a very good meeting, and we want to share some of the positive things that came out of that meeting. The board received beforehand a packet, and we have to prepare a packet for every meeting, and this packet was 162 pages long, two inches thick. I can't tell you how much time goes into that preparation, but that preparation and the Lord's blessings was, was very, very helpful. Now, uh, some of the specifics, the, the search for a provost, as you may know, we have engaged the Weingarth Group from California to lead the search for our new provost. And at this recent board meeting, we received an update on the search. We expect that the search is going to last most of this academic year. At the earliest, it would be concluded in February. It could well be that it goes all the way to the Board of Regents meeting in May. And that's because of the nature of this important position and the desire that we do a very thorough, credible uh, search. So we will keep you updated on that. In the meantime, people ask me, how is it going? And, and I can honestly say, and I think others will vouch for this, we haven't missed a beat. We haven't missed a beat in part because of the service and quality that Dr. Robinson brings as the interim provost. And the same is true of the interim academic officer, Dr. Okamoto. We're not missing a beat because Dr. Kloa did an excellent job uh, during his tenure. And this is, as I think I mentioned before, a very cohesive faculty, a cohesive faculty with a staff. And while we miss Dr. Kloa, we haven't missed a beat. And so the future looks positive. But this search will take uh, most of the year and we'll let you know as time goes on. The next item of business is the campus uh, master plan. As you should know, because it's been reported, the Board of Regents has adopted the uh, campus master plan. They did that in the previous meeting. And over the course of preparing that plan, we analyze current building uses, vacancies, deferred maintenance, and future needs and building usages. And it was agreed that one of the first things that we would do would be to demolish uh, the long vacant and architecturally out of place Fritz and Metzger halls. And when you go by those two dormitories, you see that they are ready to be taken down 
shortly. The, the uh, asbestos abatement has been, been done and it won't be too long before those buildings come down. I have to say on the side that I lived in each of those dormitories and I kind of suspected that at least they would have left one of my rooms up, kind of like Daniel Harmelink is here from CHI, and you know, you have the Walther room over there, and they probably, I thought they would have done that for my dormitory room. But the humbling of Dale continues, and <laughs> Fortunately, my last year, I lived in uh, I dorm, Grapener, and I know they won't knock that thing down. Not that one. So, um, having gotten the sput out of the way, uh, the board also resolved to renovate Cotta Hall down by the field house, and that renovation will happen after our current lease with Fonfon University uh, comes to an end this school year. Uh, the board voted to sell some of our excess properties on San Benita. We have, I think, two, we have two properties down there that we still own. Years ago, years ago, we used to own many buildings on San Benito and also on Arundel, but those two will be sold. And they also decided to begin renovating the historic faculty homes in the faculty rows on Seminary Terrace North and South. All these items uh, that I've just mentioned have been approved and they will go to the Synodical Board of Directors to put the final okie dokie on it. And that process has already started. Now strategic priorities is the next item. Our current strategic plan has four uh, priorities. And uh, not surprisingly, uh, three of them will continue into the next year, next years. This December wraps up the current strategic uh, plan, and so the board is very active and involved in the, the new strategic plan and priorities for the years ahead. Uh, the first priority that will be retained, and this is no surprise, is a seminary's commitment to, uh, the, to the preparation of pastors, deaconesses, and other church leaders. This is a high priority that you be prepared and those who will come after you pre be prepared for 21st century ministry. Also to be retained from the current plan is this providing resources to the church at large, both for clergy and for laity. And that is increasingly important as technology moves forward, um, the country becomes less and less Christian, post-church, and we need to get our phenomenal resources uh, out, to the, out, out to the field. And then thirdly, from the current plan continuing into the new plan, will be the funding of this ongoing mission of our Savior through Concordia Seminary. That will always be uh, uh, an issue since we are so donor dependent and that will continue in the, next, in the next strategic plan. But now to move to some new anticipated strategic priorities. There's gonna be a huge emphasis on recruitment. About 55% of North American seminaries are experiencing low enrollments in the Master of Divinity programs. So this is not unique to the St. Louis and to the Fort Wayne seminaries. It's in 55% of ATS seminaries. And the reasons for this low enrollment are known. Okay, I'm not gonna get into them now, but they are known. Our challenge is to turn that around. And so we're committed to fostering a culture of recruitment and we need to reverse this trend. We need to reverse this trend and we look to you to help. There's an old saying, as goes the seminary, so goes the church. And if our two seminaries are not able with the assistance of the congregations of the LCMS, 
If we're not able to turn this round around, the decline of the institutional church, the synod that we know and love, will continue. This is a, a high priority. And it's not just about the preservation of the church. It's for the sake of the gospel. I'm very confident that we can do it. And I know the reasons why I'm confident that we can do it. I, I won't take the time to get into that uh, right now. But the world is desperate. You can see it on the news. You see it in your exchanges with people who are outside of the church. The world is desperate for the message that we have for our Lord Jesus Christ. And so often they do not realize that they are lacking what you and I sometimes, and to our shame, take for granted. So now the question is, what are we doing? Including recruitment in our strategic priorities is a big step. We're also taking a number of visionary steps. For the first time in several years, we have a full complement of admissions officers. That hasn't been the case for some years, and I, I know Pastor Reedy is happy to be the one of the three uh, recruiters, admissions officers who are th out there in the field. We are also reaching to our alumni for their help in identifying future students. Th this is, I think, great. Thank you, Mrs. Biggs. I had proposed to Vicki that the new 2018 calendar be the men of Concordia Seminary. You know, kind of each month features a macho prof. <laughs> we don't have any. <laughs> so to her credit, she totally rejected my advice and, and the calendar is focused on recruitment. And I've seen the proofs of it. I, I, I think you and the advancement team have done a marvelous job and this will be out about Thanksgiving time. Be sure not only to get a calendar for yourself, but also when you go home, some calendars that you can take home and spread the message. Um, great calendar, and it's a great need. Um, moving on, one of the things that our Board of Regents uh, wants to foster is greater collaboration of the seminary with other entities in the LCMS, and that most notably is our sister seminary in Fort Wayne and with the International Center. And the board doesn't always know that we have constant conversation with, um, with both the IC and Concordia Theological Seminary. In fact, this morning, I did chapel at Concordia Publishing House and I talked about our board's desire to collaborate and received a very positive response. And if you know that I've taken a little side job with the Lutheran Hour, um, yeah, we're collaborating, but we want to push this all the more because in this day and age, especially with the diminution of, of resources in most entities, what we need to do is collaborate as, as much as we can. So we look forward to that happening. It makes a lot of sense. And finally, our board wants to raise up something that we raise up here on campus all the time, and that's Lutheran identity. It is the way we are formed. It is the way we think and the way we act. The Reformation celebration is an opportunity for us to realize the blessings that we have as the heirs of the Reformation, always focused on the message of Jesus Christ in God's revealed word. So we anticipate that um, the Lutheran identity is going to be a centering piece in the new strategic plan, and, 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 and that's wonderful. It keeps us grounded. I might say that Sunday, I've been traveling a lot, and I'm not sure where, where I was. I think I know where I am now. <laughs> I was at, I, I preached a Reformation service rally in Omaha. Almost a thousand people were present. 
and while I was there, I was asked about a, a Reformation service in Michigan and was told that 14,000 people attended that Michigan Reformation service. I mean, duh. It is time to celebrate who we are by the grace of God in Jesus Christ through what Luther and the other reformers have given to us. So Lutheran identity will be a uh, centering point for the new strategic plan. Now, let's see, I got a teleprompter here. Is there anything else that I need to address? No, no, this is just, there's a one, th oh, financial aid. All right, let's get to it, Dale. Cut out the, cut out the shput. There's no doubt about it. Our single greatest need is more students, and we continue to hear that one of the barriers to recruiting more students is the cost of education. So I'm pleased now to announce a new financial aid policy adopted by the Board of Regents for the Master of Divinity and Residential Alternate Route Programs. And what I will do is ad lib less and actually pay attention to, to the teleprompter. So if you will, it's not the best homiletical way to communicate, but I, w I want to get this to you the way it was prepared. Beginning next year, all current and future MDiv and residential alternate route students will be guaranteed financial aid at least equal to their tuition. I'll say that again. Starting with the academic year beginning in the fall of 2018, all students in the MDiv and RAR programs are guaranteed financial aid for all of your tuition. Now, how is this going to work? We are blessed to have many sources of financial aid. Some awards are discretionary, and our financial aid director, Laura Hemmer, is charged with aligning the restrictions and requirements of awards with the needs and qualifications of students. Other aid, like support from your home congregations and districts, thank you, live streamers, that is, um, not discretionary, but unique to you who come from the district or the congregation that is helping with the tuition. Unfortunately, we have found in last years that there's a great disparity among our students with these types of aid. Finally, I should, I should say, you know, some congregations and districts give some students more than others do, and that's, that's where the disparity comes, and we want to deal with that disparity. Finally, as a source of income, there is adopt the student donors who provide significant amounts of aid to students. Now, if aid from these sources is enough to cover the cost of tuition, great. Your tuition is then covered. If the aid is in excess of tuition, even better. The student can use those funds to offset other expenses of seminary education. I should say that when I started almost 13 years ago, this was not the case. And again, I won't get, get into the changes that have been made. And I have to thank our, the people of advancement and, and, and the, uh, the financial office, Mike and Chad and so on, uh, for their great work here. But however, if there is not enough there to cover the tuition bill, now the seminary will provide an, an additional grant to cover the balance. It's that simple. Through the night I thought about this, and I'm off script. It's like building blocks, okay? It used to be that the seminary put the first building block of about 25% financial aid. And then districts and congregations and adopt a student put the building blocks toward full coverage on top of that first 25% seminary grant. Sometimes that worked, but sometimes that didn't. So now what we're doing is taking that first building block of what the seminary will give, taking it out, 
And we start with the building blocks of your, your congregation at home, your district, adopt a student, other scholarships that, for which you would qualify, and then wherever those building blocks are, we will add, if necessary, from the seminary funds so that 100% of your tuition is met, MDiv and RAR. And if it happens that those first sources, congregations, districts, and so on, exceed tuition, that's well and good for you, okay? Is this clear? Is this, are, are you getting, getting this? Are you, yeah, okay, yeah. So again, back to script, if your sources of financial aid aren't enough to cover your tuition bill, then you will be awarded the seminary's residential grant in an amount great enough to cover the remaining balance of your tuition bill. The amount of the residential grant will obviously vary from one student to the next, depending on the amount of shortfall any student has when it comes to his tuition. Notice that I did not mention work study or loans. We are committed to providing 100% of tuition aid in the form of grants that do not have to be earned or paid back. We want to be able to see the, the, the number of loans taken out decline, and we've already had good progress on that, and, and, and that's our ultimate goal for your time here at the seminary. At present, about one-third of our MDiv and RAR students don't receive enough financial aid to cover their bill in full, one-third. So this new policy will cover that shortfall, relieving their burden and, I pray, opening the door to more students down the road who can put the worry of how to pay for their seminary education behind them. A few additional points. First, please understand that there is no cap on the amount of financial aid any one student may receive from any source other than the residential grant. I mentioned 13 years ago there was a cap, and, and that cap is, has, has long been removed and completely removed now. Any amount received over and above the cost of tuition from endowment aid, adopt a student, district and congregations, and third party scholarship may be used for room and board, insurance, or other costs of attendance. Second, both the administration and the regions believe this new policy is so important and beneficial that we are offering it, now get this, to all MDiv and RAR students in the current academic year, if you want it. Remember, everything that I've been saying up to now was 2018, the next year. But because this is so important and because God has blessed us, uh, we are able to offer it to you this year. Laura Hemmer will be in touch by email immediately after this meeting, right, Laura? She nods her head yes, and she'll also be around here to answer some, some questions about the details of how to get this largesse for this year. The Regents also adopted a new financial aid policy for students in the Center for Hispanic Studies and Ethnic Immigrant Institute of Theology programs through a three-way partnership between the LCMS district sending the student to CHS or EIIT. Secondly, through the, with the congregation or ministry where the student will serve. And thirdly, the seminary tuition for CHS and EIIT students will be fully funded. Uh, both of the policies I've discussed require a signed agreement. Listen up on this. Let me address the agreement between the seminary and the MDiv RAR students first. All students in these programs must enter into a covenant whereby you agree to the policy which includes a requirement that you cooperate fully with our financial aid policies, that you apply for scholarships, that you disclose all known aid and communicate regularly with adopt-a-student donors. Shouldn't have to say that last one because communication and is part of the pastoral office. Um, and, and, and by and large, you all do wonderfully on that, but that's part of the covenant. Um, for CHS and EIIT students, the agreement is between the three entities described, the district, the calling institution, and the seminary. 
The seminary is committed to paying one third of the cost of tuition for CHS and EIIT students. The other two entities must cover the remaining two thirds. I should at this, uh, <clears throat> no, let me say that this is all possible because of the wonderful generous partnerships that our seminary has with LCMS districts, congregations, and individual donors. Today, Concordia Seminary students are receiving record amounts of financial aid. And while we celebrate and give thanks for that generous support which has been given as a result of the Generations Campaign, it's important to remember, and this is critical, that removing our students' out-of-pocket tuition expenses can only continue and get even better with the ongoing support of our partners and donors. I would plead that you do not say, and please do not report in the field, that tuition is free. Because what we have already seen is people will hear that the seminary has been blessed, that you're not covering the cost of tuition, and they will say, well, the seminary does not need any money. Unless things have changed, well over 50%, almost 60% of our revenue continues to come from donations. We are not tuition driven. So we will, in the new strategic priorities, continue to let the church know that we need to be in partnership on this so that this, I think, generous uh, financial aid policy can continue. So you should know enough that, you know, avoid the word, yeah, we get free tuition and explain what's really going on, how, how this is a true partnership between the field and Concordia Seminary. Let me also say one other thing as, as we're drawing toward a close. I haven't mentioned the deaconesses, and that's not because we have forgotten you. Financial aid for our deaconess students is structured in a different way. The Deaconess program is structured underneath the graduate school, but ultimately we will provide a capstone grant so that Deaconesses will also be able to meet their tuition. Now a, 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 a sidebar. The, the Generations Campaign. The official name is Generations, a campaign for Concordia Seminary, is drawing to a close at the end of this year. And by the grace of God and the phenomenal support of you in the field, the campaign is close to meeting all of its goals. We thank from the bottom of our heart everyone whose support has made this campaign an unprecedented success. If someone had said, Dale, 13 years ago, you'll have a campaign to reach $180 million. I would have thought they were on whatever people smoked 13 years ago. <laughs> but never underestimate what the spirit does in motivating people who live in that gospel of Jesus. An important action by the Board of Regents at the last meeting was to agree to continue the, the, the work of the campaign under a new theme, Generations 2020. So on one hand, the Generations campaign is, is drawing to its close, but the emphases are going to continue under Generations 2020. And 2020 is, describes eyesight. We have to have a vision for the future. But 2020 also lays out the year 2020 when we, we desire to see some significant changes around the seminary. And, and the first and foremost one is more, more students. So I'm looking forward to keeping this theme going, Generations 2020. It's, it's an important time, especially for a guy who is in a generation that is receding and looking forward to the generations of my my children and grandchildren, and perhaps someday their grand, great-grandchildren, um, so that when I'm in heaven, I will know that Concordia Seminary is continuing to play a vital role in the spread of the mission of our Lord Jesus Christ. All of this is a crucially important message to hear, 
and we must work together now to keep the financial barrier to coming to the seminary as low as possible. So start thinking Generations 2020, looking toward the future and recruitment. So now our presentation truly does draw to a close. And I want to thank you for your attention. We will have a little bit of time for, for questions. We have been given so much. Missionaries tell their stories from around the world, and it's just, it shuts me up. And I assume it puts you in wonderment that God and the church have given to us so much, of which we are only the temporary stewards. This is a wonderful time to be the church. And with the compulsion of faith, it's a wonderful time to be getting into the ministry. To repeat, Laura Hemmer will be in touch with you, and uh, there will be some people up here to answer a few questions uh, and to go over these details. The Reformation anniversary is a right around the corner, as if you, <laughs> as if you didn't know it. And this year's academic theme comes from Luther's preface to the Romans, where he said, faith is a living, daring confidence in God's grace, so sure and certain that the believer would stake his life on it a thousand times. I don't know if you think about those last words, but I certainly do. The believer would stake his life on faith in the grace of God a thousand times. For me, it is sometimes scary, certainly always humbling to realize that I'm staking my life now and when I go into eternity on Jesus Christ. Whoa, that is a shut me up, fear of God, love Jesus experience that totally gets to the deepest depths of my being. Concordia Seminary is more committed than ever to letting people know the blessings that come through faith in the grace of God given to us in Jesus. At the risk of saying something that you have heard from me before, I will quote Dr. Arnold Kuntz, who now is in heaven, and he said, life narrows down, and a lot of us know it, and you will all experience it. Life narrows down and crisis comes and suddenly only one thing matters and there in the narrow place stands Jesus. That is why Concordia Seminary exists. You and I are staking our lives, our ministries, and our temporal and eternal future upon Jesus. I know of no greater calling in life. And I thank you for your witness to me, and I pray that all of us will witness to one another on our heavenward way. Please join me in prayer. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your spirit among us, in our individual hearts and lives, in our families and in this community. We pray that you will continue to keep our eyes on you, to live and move and have our being in your name, in your revelation toward us. And we pray with all humility 
but with much fervor that through us your mission will reach those who are helpless and hurting in this world. The people for whom you died and rose again and by your resurrection and pouring out the Spirit send us and the Word to come into their lives with good hope, with the faith and the love that are in you. Bless everyone in attendance this day. Bless those who have kindly joined us via the live stream. And may we always say, not unto us, O Lord Jesus, not unto us, but unto thy name. Give glory for thy mercy and for thy true sake. Amen. <clears throat>